We're on the 48-foot research vessel Capricorn. On this rainy day, we've joined marine biologists from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, to a spot just three miles off that state's coast. We're in about 30 feet of water. It's here where the longest continuous shark study in the U.S. has now revealed dramatic changes in the coastal shark population. Back in the 1970s, when the survey started, they pulled in large sharks like this great white. But environmental changes may have caused larger species of sharks in these waters to move elsewhere, and smaller sharks became more prolific. The stuff that we're going to catch is going to be on the bottom. And that's step one to then getting the sharks. Yeah, for sure. Before catching sharks, research teams need bait. It's just what's needed for the long line. Within the hour, this is a black nose shark. They're pulling in sharks. Fork length is 96.2, and we've got 100 plus. To prevent the sharks from dying, they're out of the water less than five minutes. What we're finding, the compared to the 1970s, we have fewer sharks overall. The sharks that we have tend to be smaller, in some cases substantially so. We have almost one species dominating. This one, which was a minor component of the community around here back in the 1970s, but now is dominant. While decades of overfishing cut shark populations, the good news, fishing regulations help save them. On this day, we mostly tag a shark called the Atlantic Sharp News. I thought these sharks would be bigger. Everybody does. We bring up these two and a half foot long sharks and it's like, well, when are you gonna get the sharks, right? <laughs> the big sharks in almost all locations aren't around anymore. It's not just here. One reason for the smaller sharks and less diversity could be an increase in water temperature, six degrees over 40 years. Fewer big sharks may be good news for turtles and fish, which are on a shark's menu, but ecologists say it throws the undersea ecosystem off balance. One example, more turtles means more seagrass is eaten. Seagrasses are important because they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it into the sediment and store it in the sediment, thereby decreasing the amount of CO2 that we release. And there may be signs of recovery. Since conservation efforts picked up in the 90s, some larger species like duskies and scalloped hammerhead sharks started popping up in their catch again. These things don't happen in isolation. This long line study is not just about sharks. It's one of the means we can use to learn about this ecosystem. With 50 years under your belt, what do you need? I'll give you a simple answer, 50 more years. Sharks, mostly out of sight, but adapting to changes. While scientists believe their undersea world is shifting faster in human history than ever. Again, so much out of sight and maybe out of mind, but also incredibly interesting to see how the food chain under the sea somehow relates and impacts perhaps those of us up here on land. You know, the scientists have been able to gather in this 51-year study data points from close to 11,000 sharks that, again, is feeding information to scientists around the globe for a better understanding of what's happening to our environment. Mm -hmm. Guys? Wow. Fascinating. Wow. All right, Kerry Sanders for us there in Lauderdale by the Sea. Yeah. Thank you, Kerry. Shark Week. Uh, by the way, he's back in the third hour with more, and Kerry's got a Shark Watch special on Today All Day bringing us remarkable shark attack survivor stories. Wow. You can check it out on our streaming channel on Peacock. That starts at 1130. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.